One of the most fundamental ideas in all of mathematics is the idea of continuity. And we begin to explore that in calculus. And then if you continue studying mathematics, you'll see it appear again in different forms in different branches of mathematics. So what is continuity? The basic definition, or I guess the intuitive definition, would be this. A function is continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pencil. All right, that's our calculus kind of intuitive definition. So something like, um, you know, here we go. Yes, this is continuous. All right, I just drew a nice function. Let's contrast that with some things that are not continuous, right? Something that's missing a single point, right? That's a nice function everywhere except for this one point, A, we'll call it. And that's a problem right there at A. It's missing a point. So this is not continuous. Okay, uh, maybe you have something like a piecewise function defined everywhere, sure, but it jumps and we lose that continuity. So this one is not continuous. Or maybe you have something like an asymptote, right? We all know what those look like. I don't know, maybe out here, and then a function might come up like this and go down like so. This clearly is not continuous, right? So if you need to pick up your pencil, to draw the function, it's not continuous. That's not a very mathematical definition, but luckily we do have a mathematical definition. Even if you're just studying the real numbers, like we are in calculus, if you dig down on this, there are many, many different definitions of continuity. They all essentially mean the same thing, but there's a lot of different ways you can approach continuity. And again, you'll discover that um, as you take future math classes, which I hope you do. For the calculus definition of continuity, we will use this continuity checklist. Um, and what it says is, if it says a function is continuous at a point A if, and then it gives three different requirements. Uh, the first one has to be defined at A, so A has to be in the domain of the function, basically. Um, the limit as x goes to A of f of x needs to exist, and the limit as x goes to A of the function needs to be equal to the value of f evaluated at a. So let's take a look at an example and see how this continuity checklist applies. It'll become a little more clear when we have a nice example. So here's an example of a function with all kinds of discontinuities. You can see it's pretty choppy. Clearly we couldn't draw this without picking up our pencil or pen. And what we want to do in this exercise is list all the discontinuities and then say why it's a discontinuity. So we'll make a little list here and just go through these. And here I don't want to get into the weeds about what happens at the endpoints. Um, I'm just going to kind of look at the function from 0 to 5 and not, not really discuss the endpoints. Um, what we're interested more in this exercise is just using the continuity checklist to look at what happens kind of in the interior of the function. So let's leave those endpoints be and just look at all, all the behavior on the interior. And let's move from right to left. So as we move in here from, from right to left, the first one that I'm seeing is this open circle here. Okay, so we would say that this is a discontinuity at x equals 3. Why? Because f of 3 is not defined. Not defined. We could also say that 3 is not in the domain of f. Moving further from right to left, now I'm seeing this jump discontinuity here, where at x equals 2, it jumps from 2 to 3. OK, so yep, that's discontinuous. I couldn't draw that without picking up my pencil. So this is at x equals 2. And on the continuity checklist, this one is number 2. For a function to be continuous, it requires that the limit exists. But remember, for a limit to exist, the left and right limits need to be equal. The one-sided limits need to be equal. Here they are not. Coming in from the left, we approach 2. But coming in from the right, we approach 3. So the limit does not exist is the reason why x equals 2 is not continuous. OK, moving on further from right to left here. Now we get to this discontinuity at x equals 1. 
Okay, so I'm looking at that bit there now. Here, the function is defined at 1. There's f of 1, right? f of 1 equals 4, so it's defined. The left and right limits equal each other. As we go in from the left and from the right, these one-sided limits both, both equal 3, so the limit exists. So number 1 uh, is defined, limit exists, number 2, but number 3, the limit as x goes to a of f of x has to equal f of a. Well here, we're approaching 1, and that limit is 3. But f of 1, f of 1 happens to be 4. So this is the one we fail. So we do indeed have a discontinuity here at x equals 1. And the reason for that is that the limit at 1 does not equal the value of the function at 1. And just a little bit more notation here. We call these two discontinuities removable discontinuities. Removable. And what that means is if we can replace a single point and fix the discontinuity, it's a removable discontinuity. So note that both of these could be fixed very easily by just changing a single point. However, the discontinuity at x equals 2 cannot be fixed by changing out a single point, so we call this a jump discontinuity because the function jumps right at that point. 